Good afternoon to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope um, you have had a stimulating two days of discussions and debate on how we can make green growth a reality. I do hope that there is clarity on the components of a roadmap to achieve this. There were some key themes that emerged over the various deliberations at the summit, and I would like to highlight some of these. The first is that green growth is not a choice for emerging markets. It is an imperative. Growth and sustainability are not mutually exclusive. And this is true for both countries and for corporations, and also true across sectors, whether it's agriculture, industry, and services. Similarly, sustainability cannot be decoupled from urbanization. As was noted in the panel discussions, more than half the world's population today lives in cities, which is expected to grow to two-thirds by the year 2050. This urban growth will be more pronounced in Asia and Africa. While cities are the growth drivers of the future, they also account for the biggest share of carbon emissions and ecological footprint. Sustainable growth is not just about environmental aspects, but is also about social inclusion. Social entrepreneurship is one of the pillars for such growth, as was highlighted by the representative from Ashoka. There are huge inequality in the distribution of wealth in the urban areas. And the World Bank estimates that by 2035, cities will become the predominant locations for poverty. Hence, solutions would need to address social inclusion and address inequalities created by poverty. This means addressing malnutrition as it has a huge socioeconomic impact. As we know, the first thousand days after birth are critical to ensure appropriate nutrition. Unless addressed, urban India will face health challenges, which will be a problem for a country with a young population. The second theme is that breakthrough innovation is critical in the journey of green growth. It's very true that breakthrough technologies are required in both industry and agriculture to address food, water, and energy security. Water management is critical to manage disease. 70% of diseases in India is waterborne. In agriculture, breakthrough technology is required in seed culture to develop seeds that can adapt to climatic change, as highlighted by the representative from Mars Incorporated. We need an end-to-end -end approach required in agri-sector, not just improve yields, but across the entire agri-chain, including storage, logistics, marketing, financing, etc. We also need to find ways to take technology to farmers and give them the knowledge so that they can take advantage of it. In industry, breakthrough innovation is required in reducing the huge consumption of water in the power generation sector, as was discussed in the water panel. But it's also true that there is enough technology currently already available to achieve a significant portion of our requirements for resource efficiency. As the McKinsey cost abatement curves show, there is more than enough opportunity for countries and sectors to achieve resource efficiency with no or low cost initiatives. So while we strive towards identifying, developing, and eventually commercializing breakthrough innovations, we must not lose sight of the available technology which can address many of the resource efficiency requirements. The final theme I would like to mention is the role of the government. I think there was a common understanding that emerged from the discussion that business should lead in green growth and government should support with the appropriate enabling regulatory framework. I was very happy to note the active participation from the government side in the summit. Perhaps it would have also been good to see government representatives from other emerging markets at this summit so that there could have been a government-to-government -government discussion and essentially exchange of learnings. I would encourage our government representatives to learn from government initiatives in other emerging markets that have resulted in sustainable growth. For example, our city governments can learn from the government framework set up in such cities as Brasilia, Rio de Janeiro, and Sao Paulo in Brazil, and Cape Town, Durban, and Johannesburg in South Africa. These are cities in emerging markets that have been ranked high on the sustainability scale. 
While the point is taken that each city is unique, and hence the solution should be unique, there is enough good work done by others which can be adapted and customized to our local situations so that we can leverage and leapfrog the sustainability curve and not reinvent the wheel. Government can also leverage the capabilities of the private sector very effectively. India has a very vibrant private sector and there are enough capabilities and solutions available in the private sector to unlock the benefits of green growth. Hence, in conclusion, as we develop the growth roadmaps for our respective countries and companies, we need to keep the following three aspects in mind. Firstly, we don't have a choice, but to develop a roadmap for growth that is green, sustainability has to be integrated into our growth strategies. Secondly, while we strive towards breakthrough innovation, there are enough technologies available to meet our most current and pressing resource efficiency requirements at a low cost, so lack of break breakthrough innovation cannot be an excuse for inaction. Finally, business and government would need to collaborate extensively in this roadmap with business leading and government supporting with an enabling regulatory framework consisting of fiscal, statutory, and voluntary requirements and public-private partnership structures. As I mentioned at the beginning of the conference, we need to commit to constantly explore greener ways of doing things. It's only by setting these constraints upon ourselves we will be forced to carve a new path, path of green growth. As we conclude the B4E Global Summit 2013, a big thank you to the Business for the Environment Forum for giving us all this opportunity to enlarge our vision and deepen our commitment to green growth for the benefit of the generations that will follow us on this planet. Thank you very much.